from Loretto Abbey, home to the Sisters of Loretto since 1928, and the Loretto Abbey Secondary School, and with the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. Welcome to the celebration of the Daily TV Mass. My name is Father Pat Fitzpatrick. The televising of this Mass is made possible by a contribution from three donors. The first is Wilda Pegoraro from Sudbury, Ontario, in thanksgiving for blessings received and for the family. The second is an anonymous donor from Hamilton, Ontario, in thanksgiving to St. Joseph for their house sale. The third is Rhea Bickel from Red Deer, Alberta, in loving memory of her husband, Nicholas, for their living and deceased family members, and in thanksgiving for the caregivers and the Knights of Columbus of St. Mary's Parish in Red Deer, Alberta. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, may the risen Lord be with you all. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, whom, taught by the Holy Spirit, we dare to call you Father, bring, we pray, to perfection in our hearts the spirit of adoption as your sons and daughters, that we may merit to enter into the inheritance which you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, as Gentiles by birth, remember that you were at that time without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now, in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off has been brought near by the blood of Christ. For Christ is our peace. In his flesh, he has made both groups into one and has broken down the dividing wall, that is, the hostility between us. He has abolished the law with its commandments and ordinances that he might create in himself one new humanity in place of the two, thus making peace, and might reconcile both, group, group, both groups to God in one body through the cross, thus putting to death the hostility through it. So Christ came and proclaimed peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near. For through him, both of us have access in one spirit of the Father. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ himself as the cornerstone. In him, the whole structure is joined together and grows into a whole temple of the Lord, in whom you, are all, in whom you also are built together spiritually into a dwelling place for God. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. And A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you. Jesus said to the disciples, Be dressed for action and have your lamps lit. Be like those who are waiting for their master to return from the wedding banquet, so that they may open the door for him as soon as he comes and knocks. Blessed are those slaves whom the master finds alert when he comes. Truly, I tell you, he will fasten his belt and have them sit down to eat, and he will come and serve them. If he comes during the middle of the night or near dawn and finds them so, Blessed are those slaves. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In uh, today's Mass, we've heard the words of St. Paul written to the new converts to Christianity in Ephesus. Ephesus is in Turkey. And from time to time, uh, we need to remind ourselves that once St. Paul got to work, he traveled on foot through the whole area of the northeastern Mediterranean, and eventually as far west as Rome. And today's first reading was part of a letter he wrote to new converts in Christianity living in Ephesus, in Turkey. When they became Christians, two groups, former Jews and Gentiles, joined together 
but not without several difficulties. They had not been accustomed to greet each other, nor had they prayed together, nor had they ever celebrated the Eucharist, of course, together. Maybe the words of the hymn, All Are Welcome, come to mind. I, I quote the, the first lines. Let us build a house where love can dwell and all can safely live. Let us build a house where prophets speak and words are strong and true. Let us build a house where love is found in water, wine, and wheat. Let us build a house where hands will reach beyond the wood and stone. Let us build a house where all are named, their songs and visions heard. That's maybe a very strong challenge to people who just became Christians. It's a very strong challenge for us who have been Christians for a long time. Let us build a lot of what needs to be built for each other. So we would sing all our welcome. We'd sing it out loud. I hope we'd live what we sing. Paul himself encouraged ins insiders and outsiders to do so. Christ is our peace. He has made both groups, insiders and outsiders, into one he has made them and has broken down any dividing wall between the outside and the inside. He didn't want any hostility between these newcomers joining this new group. He wanted to reconcile both groups to God in one body through the cross, thus putting to death that hostility through it. Through the cross, it may be painful to let go what we bring that we know we shouldn't be bringing. And rather than try to explain his words, I think hearing them again may say it all. You are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God. Do you and I consider ourselves that? We are members of God's household. Should that change us a bit? Should we live up to what is expected of us? And Christ himself said, or saw himself as the cornerstone. In him, the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord. A description of what our Christian churches should be. So as Christians, we belong to and go to different churches. There was a time when as Catholics, we claim to be the one and only true church. Gradually, we've come to see and understand that other Christian churches may be equally, if at times not more Christian than us. I remember again the words of a hymn, they will know we are Christians by our love, by our love. They will know we are Christians by our love. How Christian then am I, if that's the criterion for being a Christian? In that context, well, I never forget my mother's words about our next door neighbors in Ireland. Uh, an elderly mother and her adult son, along with the family dogs. They had named them Peter, Sheila, 
Rory and Sean. You might think they were human beings living there, but they were the family dogs. We knew them from across the railing, which divided their house and uh, our house. They were full of energy when they were about to be taken for their daily walk or just let loose in the uh, front garden. I especially enjoyed my cross-railing conversations, I'd call them, with Rory and Sheila. Uh, my mother liked them too. She also enjoyed a daily conversation with Mrs. Canerny, the mother of the house. And nearly now 60 years later, I've not forgotten my very Catholic mother's opinion of these next door neighbors. They are wonderful people for Protestants. I hope that's not our outlook on wonderful people who don't happen to be Catholics. No, we're sons and daughters of the same God. We have one Father in heaven, so we pray the Lord's Prayer in this and every Mass, the prayer Jesus taught his disciples, the prayer common to all Christians. More brings us together than divides us. Please stand. That the ongoing rejoining of Catholics and Protestants may continue, we pray to the Lord. Lord our that our Christian churches may support one another when needed, we pray to the Lord. Lord For all who take part in our daily masses but have now died, we pray to the Lord. Lord and for all of those in the daily TV Mass community who have asked to be remembered in our prayer intentions book, we pray that during this time of thanksgiving, may we always be truly grateful for all our gifts and willing to share our goods and talents with others. We pray to the Lord. Lord Grant, O Lord, our hearts renewed Keep us safe, keep us attentive to each other through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Yes. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be pleased, O Lord, to accept the offerings of your church, for in your mercy you have given them to be offered, and by your power you transform them into the mystery of our salvation, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love, his resurrection we confess with living faith, and his coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts by sending down your spirit upon them so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out upon you and upon many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together, Francis, together with Francis, our Pope, and all our bishops. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her husband, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be heirs to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer one another that peace of the Lord. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. May the communion in your sacrament that we have consumed save us, O Lord, and confirm us in the light of your truth through Christ our risen Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go from this Mass in the peace of Christ. Amen. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass. If you'd like to order it, please send a check or money order payable to the NCBC and send it to the NCBC, Post Office Box 54035, Markham, Ontario, L3P 7Y4. Send your 